Hey everybody, welcome to Adobe Max 2022. Uh, my name is Jeremy Lord and shortly I'll be going through a live Q&A with the fantastic Pablo Gomez. Um, so thanks for joining us from whatever time zone you're in. Um, this is a live Q&A session, so um, please um, log in to your um, CC account and you can drop some questions in. We'll pass them on to Pablo as we go along. Um, but join me in welcoming um, Pablo Gomez. Uh, hey, Pablo, really awesome to have you on um, the Q&A today. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do, who you are, and what makes you tick. Sure, thank you. Um, yeah, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, so my name is Pablo Munoz Gomez. I'm a 3D concept and character artist. I founded the 3D concept artist website, which is more like an academy to kind of like learn 3D stuff to produce concept art. Um, I also run the ZBrush Guides website. So I have a few, a few different projects online to basically share what I know, what I've been kind of like collecting throughout the years in terms of like experience and, uh, you know, help other artists to also grow and maybe someone that is not part of the 3D world to try, try to uh, transition into this uh, fantastic world of 3D. Um, so yeah, that's that's basically me in a nutshell. That's awesome. I love that. The, the passing on of the, of the skills is always something that's super important to do. And like, uh, I'd, I'd love to get into 3D, so I'll definitely check out those resources that you got. Um, yeah, for sure. As I said, um, please don't hesitate to, to drop some questions in chat. I'll get us kick started um, with a quick little question about applications. So from mm -hmm. your upcoming talk, uh, I'd imagine you use a fair few programs. Um, 3D programs tend to be quite big. There's a lot to know in them. What would be some of your advice for um, beginners or somebody who's trying to sort of train up in 3D as to how to stay across multiple platforms? Right, yeah, great question. Um, look, I would say that every application is different and the way that you learn something would differ between applications. So if you focus just on the kind of like technical aspect of it, it will be pretty overwhelming. But yeah, it is important to know um, kind of like the inside out, so like where the buttons are located so that you can manipulate stuff in 3D and that sort of thing. Uh, I would say the most important thing would be to understand the, uh, the language and the concepts of 3D. So rather than than picking an application randomly, let's let's say Adobe 3D Painter and say, this looks awesome, I'm gonna learn this. Try to understand what makes that application uh, successful and how it integrates with other applications that you might be using. So uh, right. that's that's the first thing, right? And, and just to give you a very simple example, <laughs> the UV mapping, right, is very important for uh, Adobe 3D Painter so that you can take your 3D object, unwrap it so that you can see that 3D object in a flat 2D space. Um, and that's kind of like how the software knows where to place the textures, right? And that is the same concept that you sure. will find in other applications, like, you know, any any other 3D applications will work with the same concept. So learning those ideas, those uh, very, um, very basic concepts is crucial. And, and the great thing about that is that as you progress and as you learn one um, in one application, you will be able to translate all that knowledge into the next one. Um, so that's, yeah, that's one of the keys, I think. Um, and the second important step, I would say, is to um, is to figure out what the application can do for you that others cannot. Um, and that also allows you to choose between them. Uh, so that, because there is no point learning everything, just learn whatever is uh, useful. Um, I'll be 100% honest, I'm not an expert in any of the applications that I use, but I do have the knowledge that there are certain things that are in there. And if I ever need to use that, I know how to search for it and, and learn it, right? So I don't have to know absolutely everything, it's more about knowing what the application can do and then being able to understand those concepts, like I said at the beginning, and then you can just like search for them and say, oh, how, how can I do UV mapping in here? Um, and that, yeah, yeah, that basically covers the, the learning process. Yeah, that's, uh, thanks for that. I think that's super interesting because like, I, I, so I'm an illustrator and I use, you know, Photoshop, mm -hmm. various other programs to, to do my work digitally. Um, and it's one of the things mm -hmm. that I tell my students as well, or anybody kind of asking, you know, how like, how do you learn all of Photoshop plus Illustrator? And it's like, you know, the short answer is you don't. You just need yeah. to know <laughs> for what you're going to do. Like, I have no idea how photographers use Camera Raw or any of those things. 
uh, mm-hmm. because that's not what I do. I think that's a really good tip for people starting out is just like, mm-hmm. just know what you need to know. Um, mm-hmm. And I think it's a, it's really cool as well, this idea of like knowing the language, like what a UV map is and how it works and why it exists um, and what it can do for you. I think that's super interesting um, to look at and it carries across this the, the 2D realm as well. Um, so then I guess following up on that is mm-hmm. you kind of started with traditional media um, working with plasticine, which is, you know, basically 3D, but just kind of an analog version of 3D. Mm-hmm. Um, is that something that you feel would be important for somebody kind of starting out 3D modeling is maybe learn how to do it analog before you kind of jump into 3D? Hmm. Um, yes, and yes, but not necessary. I, I think I, I do it and I did it that way because that can that was my my kind of like natural transition um yeah. in fact i still do it i don't know if you can still see it here in my camera so this one okay. yeah you're behind you yeah. yeah i just started like the goals. armature so that's the base of a of a character the ones here at the top most of these ones are 3d printed so i do the same the same idea of like right. starting in digital but then i end up in physical and then just paint it over um so i don't think it's crucial to like you said, like know everything or know like how to sculpt like traditionally to then uh, go into 3D. I do think that it has uh, a massive, you know, like a massive advantage if you already know certain things. The same thing, uh, I, I suppose the same thing for you. Like if you know how to, you know, work with watercolor or oil painting or charcoal, they're different mediums within the traditional 2D, right? But then yeah. you know how to mix those colors. You know how to expect all the textures if you want to translate that in um, in digital. So I think it's the same thing. Um, knowing helps, but it's not necessary. Uh, to give you a couple of very specific examples, um, I I studied 2D animation. So that's what I studied as a career. Like I wanted to be an animator. Uh, sorry, like not 2D paper, animation. animation? Yeah. Uh, well, uh-huh. it was 3D animation, <laughs> not 2D. So right. 3D okay. animation. But um, learning the the movement of the body, learning how like the very subtle things that you do when you know in an expression, that sort of thing that I had to learn for when I was start when I was studying three D animation, that yeah. um, I've I haven't animated in a, in a very long time, like certainly not something relevant. <laughs> so, but having that knowledge of how uh, the mechanics of the body kind of like works and the anatomy and the the subtle expressions mm-hmm. have helped me a lot to work in 3D and sculpt it because I I have that basic understanding of how things would uh, change if they move or like how the masses will shift and you know the fat deposits on the face and that sort of thing. So learning something that you might think oh, that's nothing to do with 3D or like with 3D sculpting or with 3D rendering, um, it might somehow help you or give you an advantage. So I don't think you need to know like traditional sculpture to get into 3D. You can just yeah. Um, have the knowledge of, you know, you're an illustrator and you just want to be able to take the cube that you can draw very easily, but then rotate it in 3D. Um, sure. and, and in fact, if you're an illustrator and you're moving into 3D, I think it makes makes it easier because you already understand, you have much better understanding of the forms and the, uh, the three-dimensionality and perspective of the 2D forms. Um, so in 3D, it just makes it easier to, you know, know, oh, this is a cube, this is a sphere, I'm just going to yeah. place it in there. Um, whereas for me, it's kind of like the opposite, right? I'm, I'm a little bit faster and more productive if I jump straight away in 3D, sometimes, mm-hmm. not all the time, uh, than if I try to do a complex shape in 2D because I haven't done it for a while. So that's yeah. it's kind of like give and take. <laughs> and I kind of like, again, I yeah. branched out. Um, but in summary, I think it's, um, it has helped me to understand the material. Like the, I, I love the tactile texture of like pulling things and pushing to create something. And I love that feeling. So knowing that, I definitely, I think it has helped me. But it's it's mm. something that, you know, it, it's not a requirement. Like you can start as an illustrator, you can start as a 3D artist, and then just uh, take from different, you know, disciplines and create your own uh, kind of like path to to learn. Yeah. I don't know, yeah, I don't yeah, know if that yeah. answers the question at all. <laughs> no, no, 100%. Like really like... <laughs> elaborates on it quite a bit actually and it's and it's funny again it's like this thing of like a crossover with um being a 2d artist is absolutely like i i started out as a classical animator and i, I quickly realized that it's absolutely oh, right. no good at it whatsoever 
Um, but what you're saying kind of really resonates with this idea of like understanding how something works so that you can mm -hmm. draw it. Um, and that's always been one of the things that I've thought about with 3D as well. It's like for 2D, it's easy. Like I don't have to draw the back of a person, right? So if somebody's mm -hmm. like facing you, you don't have to draw their back. Whereas 3D, right. it's kind of what's kind of scares me a little bit is like, you yeah. have to do the whole thing. Like you have well, to do even the bits that you might hide as an illustrator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to exist. <laughs> That's only if you want to rotate it. Like, if I'm going to be honest, like, not all the concepts I have in my portfolio, they are sculpted at the back. So it's just, you know, created for the, yeah, for the camera. Uh, just a little trick in there. But yeah, and I, 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 I don't know. I think that, like, what you said is also very, very interesting. Like, the fact that you train as a 2D animator, that is even more intense in my eyes because you have to literally draw every single frame. So that not only creates like, you know, you get into it, whether you're good at it or not, but it just, I think it creates that muscle memory and then just repeating, 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 do like, you know, thousands of these frames, then you just have like an idea. All right, no, I know how to draw this character from every angle. That's it. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's thing that's super interesting. It, it's actually what you're saying about like classical animation being a lot harder because you have to draw every frame. I actually found the opposite, to be honest. I found it's all like, right. See those like you know you watch like a Lord of the Rings or some like CGI intensive movie and you see all the 3D bloopers where like somebody's head will turn but their eyeballs like stay in midair. Right. <laughs> yeah. Stuff like that that the computer will just be like I'm just going to do my own thing. Um, whereas classically you just you control everything even though you yeah mm -hmm. you have to draw it all. Um, but on that actually your session is coming up. Um, yep. So tell us a little bit about what what's kind of what can we expect from your session? What do you talk about? What do you go through? Yeah, sure. Um, so basically, it's kind of like um, a summary of that first question that we talked about about learning and getting into that uh, three space. I I try to focus on three applications of the Adobe three D tools. So um, Adobe three D uh, sampler, painter, and uh, stager. Right. So right. the idea to stay within those three, um, the the other one that is part of the same as well, or the other two would be modeler and uh, designer. But I don't use designer as much just because it, it is a bunch of notes and it's really interesting, but it becomes a little bit technical for me. And as soon as I get too technical, I just divorce myself from the whole creative yeah, yeah. Uh, process. Whereas these other three uh, tools like sampler, painter and stager, that's what I love about the each one of the tools have something that I love about it. And then the e ecosystem that they all work to together together um, very, very easily. So the workshop is about that. It's like, how do you utilize one of them? Like, let's say the sampler to generate the materials, right? Or generate the, the stuff from photos, from things that you can, uh, you might have uh, a photo in your, in your phone that you took when you walk, you know, went for a walk, uh, that sort of thing something that you might already have or how easy it is to convert something um, if you like kind of like an ad hoc type of texture. Like if you are thinking of, oh, I want to create, I don't know, a, a mushroom <laughs> or, a, or a tree, you just go and search for a bark texture and then you can convert that into material, right. add it to your library, and then you can send it to the next application, which is 3D Painter. Uh, and that's kind of like my workflow. Sampler to build your library of assets, then 3D Painter to combine those assets and paint over and kind of like um, it's ultimate, ultimately an authoring tool, a texturing authoring tool. So you um, yep. define where to add this stuff. Um, and then once you have the textures ready in your model, then you send it to um, Adobe 3D Stager, which is rendering. And that renderer, I got to say, is is one of my, my favorites at the moment just because of the simplicity. And I tell my students as well, is like, I, I do teach a bunch of different renders, a bunch of different tools to, to get something going. And again, going back to the previous question about like, you know, how do you learn this, this, this stuff? Uh, you don't have to learn every, everything, just learn whatever works for you. And, and Stager, for instance, is one of those tools that you don't have to know absolutely every technical aspect of it. And that's one of the things that I want to really emphasize in this workshop that it's it's just the whole idea is to have fun like bring back the the fun part of 3d uh, to your work so you don't have to think about all those very specific uh, technical things like uh, you mentioned like the the raw like the photographers right how they use the raw camera and all of that this is the same yeah. thing like in most complex or advanced 3d renderers uh, you will find the settings of the camera and then you have 
uh, depth of field, right? Or, um, you know, index of refraction in different materials. So terms that you might not be familiar with at this, at this stage, whereas in 3D Stager, you don't have that. Um, it works in the same way, but it has a much more familiar um, and easy to understand language. So in the camera, you just select the camera and then just there's a slider that says blur. Right, so you just blur the background to get that yeah. nice bokeh um, effect. So that's what I love about it, and that's the simplicity, the simplicity to the user, but the power, you know, it's like the powerful software behind it, um, and that's the that's the focus of the of the workshops. Like we're gonna take um, a little character creature, like a unicorn made up thing, um, and yeah. we're gonna go through the stages to from the from the very beginning to render it in Adobe 3D Stager and uh, creating the materials and all of that. And because of that, I built a mini library of uh, clay materials or like plasticine mm. materials to, again, <laughs> to appeal to that idea of at the very beginning, that's how I started, um, you know, working with real clay. And um, that's, yeah, <laughs> that's the that's, that's exactly the mean. that's the workshop. Yeah, oh, awesome. Yeah, no, I've, I've, I've had a sneak peek at it and it, like, yeah, I loved it. I really liked, especially what you're talking about, like the focal length and kind of rendering something into like a photograph that you've taken mm -hmm. and matching the light and getting the focus point to, to kind of be, to make it look like it's not a 3D mm -hmm. object. It's like sitting in that, um, um, in that scene that you've created. Uh, you talked a little bit about textures. We'll, we'll come back to that in a sec, but mm -hmm. um, one of the things that you mentioned as well is the, and the 3D modeler app that's just been announced. Mm -hmm. um, so have you had a chance to kind of um, look at that? Are you excited about it coming out? Are you scared of learning yeah. a whole new program? Like, No, no, yeah, I've been, um, yeah, I'm super excited about it. Um, it's it's slightly different from the the sculpting or modeling applications that I'm used to, but uh, because it's, it uses like a box modeling approach uh, where you subtract pieces or add pieces or intersect, but um, okay. it is such an intuitive tool that yeah it, it's it looks fantastic and not only that it's just again it's just another another piece of the puzzle that you can integrate into this whole uh you know pipeline of apps and then just take your your creation through all these different stages so you just build it in you know you can start in photoshop right you can just do a sketch and then bring it into modeler create something there and then just continue all the way to to rendering in stage and that that is really really appealing the fact that everything is integrated so you don't have to uh, kind of like deal too much with exporting things and make sure that the exporting works and the scale and and all of that. But you know, just click one button, everything is in the next in the next stage of the process. So that's really really exciting. Um, so yeah, I got my my VR <laughs> headset ready, and yeah, it's just a matter of finding the time to to properly learn learn this. So you're gonna go like Ready Player One and start making like VR yeah, stuff, yeah. Like, <laughs> your hands in midair. Look forward to exactly. seeing that. You gotta yeah, make a, right. a YouTube video about that process. Yeah. Um, cool. Yeah. No, I, I'm I'm pretty pumped about that as well. So, like in the Adobe ecosystem, it's mm -hmm. it, it might be a language that I might be a little bit more familiar with. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of I'm quite pumped about that. Um, you mentioned as well, just quickly, a uh, quick question around sort of to making a 2D sketch before you get into it. it uh, I think we kind of spoke a little bit about that. Is that something that you would do every time, or just um, jump straight in? No, not, not every time, but I, I tend to just doodle things around like a lot. I have like a, at least one sketchbook somewhere in the house, like scattered around, like in, yeah, just have one right here. So I yep. do have like these little like sketchbooks and um, notepads. Um, and so if I have an idea, I just like try to just do something very quickly. It's going to be like a very, very rough thumbnail. Uh, and I sometimes just like write things down just to remember that idea that I have, or, or if I'm yeah. browsing for references uh, for another project, I might come up with a new idea while I'm doing that. That actually happens mm -hmm. a lot. <laughs> just, yeah, I spend like a, a, an hour researching and then it's like, oh, this actually is better for a, you know another project. And then I end up like building boards. Um, but yeah, so I like do like these little sketches and I don't try to get something perfect into the, that's not my aim. Uh, when I do like 2D sketches. My aim is mm -hmm. more about uh, capturing the idea, capturing the concept quickly. Um, and then I know that I can translate that much better in 3D, uh, or at least, you know, I'm faster now with the tools that I know um, if I do it directly in 3D than if I spend time trying to refine the line work and all of that. Um, so yeah, they're mostly like 
like doodles and ideas, um, kind of like references for my myself to to create the project, to start the project. Um, and I, yeah, I tend to do at least a couple of thumbnails uh, per project. And but it, it really depends on, on what it is. Sometimes it's just easy to to sketch something simple in 2D yeah. than in 3D. Um, and I'm, I mean, you being an illustrator, I'm sure like you, you know the process better than me. Like when, when you're doing a 2D illustration, there's a lot of, you know, cleanup and, you know, all of that. So I try to do the same process, but the cleanup part is happens in, in 3D once, once I have something rough. It's basically having something to aim towards more than, sure. like it actually yeah. changes uh, quite a bit. And when I get into 3D, I maybe decide, you know, what this shape looks better if it was like more rounded and... You know, yeah. it, it evolves as I, as I go. So yeah, um, long story short, the, the 2D sketches that I do are just something to aim towards, nothing concrete. Um, and I develop it further in, in 3D. Cool, yeah, thanks for that. Um, so we've got about four minutes left. Um, I just oh, wanted really? to circle this back. Happens with, well. This happens yes, really, really, really fast. I'm glad you're having fun. Um, <laughs> just wanted to circle back to the texture thing because I believe that you've got a little kind of texture pack giveaway as well for our viewers. And I think the link has been popped in the, in the chat below. Um, but you spoke about kind of photographing textures if you wanted to like put some bark in or you like photographed mm -hmm. your clay. Um, how important is that? Like, how important is it to kind of build your own? Would you rather build your own or rather like download some pre-made packs or whatever? Like what's, mm -hmm. what's your workflow on this? Um, yeah, so that's, yeah, great question. So my workflow would be, I tend to create my own assets. I prefer to go through the process of learning of how I create an asset um, yeah. because in the process, I actually create a bunch of extra assets. So um, I actually have a, a workshop that it's available in the 3D Concept Artist website that I mentioned that is precisely dedicated to that. It's, it's called like um, the Asset Library Workshop. So I walk, through, I walk you through the whole process of building assets. So with the mm -hmm. textures that you say, like for example, a, a bark texture, um, let's say that that is the aim, is to create a material that looks like the bark of a tree. Um, yeah. I start the process myself to create that rather than finding a pro, um, you know a bark texture or material that probably you can find already in the uh, in the Adobe library um, and it looks pretty cool, but the fact that I do it myself means that in the process I can generate a bunch of other assets that I can use in the project. So I can create um, alphas, I can create you know like tileable textures or a pattern or a or a palette. So with one asset that I create or having the idea of creating one asset in mind. I can create 10 other assets that, that I can use. So that's one thing. The other thing is that you learn in the process, that you learn different things, how to create specific things, what works, what doesn't. Um, you test uh, a few things. And if you create it your own, then it's more, it's more specific to the project that you're doing rather than using off the shelf things that you might be able to tweak, but you, know, you can do it um, a little bit more <laughs> specifically, yeah. Oh, cool. thanks for that. Um, we're just about run out of time. Um, All right. Go, I just wanted to say thank you so much for hanging out with us today, answering some questions. It's been really interesting. Um, check out the replay of this if you kind of missed half of it, uh, and make sure you stick around for Pablo's um, session as well. Pablo, thank you so much for hanging out with us. And thank you for having me, and I'll see you in the next one. Yep. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you.